Hello and welcome to another episode of Thick Slices and Deep Cuts. Uh, on this evening's episode, this is another one of these uh, three-pack themes where I talk about you know three different bands for about you know 10, 12 minutes or so. Um, in two of these three instances, uh, we've got bands that have been around for a long time, early 90s. Uh, they have an extensive discography, and while I like these bands, I haven't kept up with them uh, entirely through their uh, career, so I know maybe a phase or an era or maybe a couple of eras of the band, uh, but not enough to do a just a, a you know an independent ranking on everything they've done. But I do like these uh, two of these bands and want to at least shed some light on them. And then the other band and the first band I'll talk about um, just hasn't been around long enough to do more than uh, you know what two albums and an EP. So they fit this just because they don't have you know they don't have five or more albums. So, um, the bands I will be discussing tonight, uh, you probably see it on the label, but uh, we're talking Blood Incantation. That says Blood Incantation somewhere in there. Um, uh, also, Nile and uh, Cataclysm. Uh, I'll get to Nile and Cataclysm in a moment, but first I'm going to start with uh, uh, Blood Incantation. Um, I've just been a huge fan of this band. They had a video that came out in the in the fall of 2019 called Inner Paths to Outer Space. It's basically an instrumental and it was kind of progressive sounding. And uh, but, but the uh, upon further inspection, and this is the album, Hidden History of the Human Race. In fact, let me get this out of here. Just incredible um, album. So this band is from uh, Denver, Colorado. All the Although the main guy, Paul Reidel, I think is from uh, like Portland, Oregon originally. But the thing I love about this band is they've got this cosmic astral death metal thing going on. But they also, you can hear it right now, this is the Giza Power Plant uh, from this album. They're just very ethereal, atmospheric, cosmic, totally uh, old school classic death metal. I mean, they're not playing to a click track. They're even using the same sort of like flanger effects that Trey Azikthoff uses, so that jet sweeper, I call it solar flares. This album and uh, Star Spawn, which I'll get to, but this album in particular has all these like uh, solar flares they do with the flanger. It's just awesome. And the pinch harmonics, it just reminds me of like Immolation's Dawn of Possession, maybe Gorgut's Erosion of Sanity, a little bit of Incantation from the first album. Um, Morbid Angel, but they really remind me of the band I used to play in Time Ghoul. And if you go on Encyclopedia Metallum, they show like similar artists. Time Ghoul is the top artist uh, recommended under similar artists. And it's just, uh, I wish I could fit the poster. This album came with this poster, and I can't fit it up on my wall anywhere. Uh, but I have it, and I'll put a picture up somewhere, but I have it in the other room by my little, my daughter's junior drum kit. Above the little junior drum kit, there's the Time Ghoul banner, and on each side, flanking each side, is uh, artwork from the Blood Incantation album. So every time you buy one of their vinyl albums, you get a poster. So you get this awesome poster of this, and then uh, Interdimensional Extinction. Uh, I've got a poster of this on the other side. It's in a different color. Instead of a black backdrop, it's like some sort of like an orange, red, orange black drop. And by the way, uh, this is artwork from the early 70s from some science fiction artist uh, named uh, Bruce Pennington, British guy. I don't know, is there less glare here? Uh, classic old school death metal band photo in the shadows. Uh, yeah, here's... Uh, Star Spawn as well from 2016, their first full length. Very cool. This one has a poster in it too, but uh, uh, the packaging is incredible. This is one of the almost the only band I can think of where I basically just want to buy everything of theirs on uh, on vinyl. Because the packaging, it comes with you know, you've got your uh, lyrics on one piece of paper or on one piece. The poster which I have hanging up comes with the CD, you get the CD, uh, and then this cool book, Stargate Research Society presents a meditative inquiry on the mystery and nature of human consciousness as revealed by blood incantation. Uh, it's pretty cool, they, they talk about too, uh, I used to watch Joe Rogan talk about it uh, when he was big on the DMT thing, the dimethyltryptamine, you know, the experiences you have when you take DMT. 
Uh, but if you look at all of their uh, their things lists, they mention a ton of 70s prog bands in here along with all the classic death metal. Uh, by the way, they do mention uh, Time Gold right there. I thought that was awesome. Uh, and you can hear some Time Gold in the music for sure. There are a few riffs in there with, where I'm like, wow, that sounds like it came straight out of one of the demos we did. Uh, but uh, yeah, they just, they're thinking, you know, they're thinking Gentle Giant, Dead Can Dance. I like Dead Can Dance. You know, Nectar, Camel. Over here, they're thinking like Chris Squire, you know, Getty Lee, things like that. So I knew there was a reason I really uh, dug this band. One, you know, they sound like a little bit like Time Gold, which is awesome. And then two, uh, you can tell they have that sort of 70s prog thing somehow in there. Even though it sounds like classic death metal, you can just tell. They've got all that atmosphere. And two, if, if you know, watch these episodes, I've done one on 1973 prog rock. I love 70s progressive rock. But I also have one on 1991 death metal. I love classic death metal. And this band just, you know, they, they I'm not saying they sound like a classic 70s prog rock band, but you can just tell they have that influence going on. Uh, and they just sound like classic death metal. Again, there's no click track. Things are raw. I don't think this is a band that... I don't think they want to play the riffs perfectly. I don't think the drummer wants to play a perfect drum fill. I think they want to dial in a good sound that sounds classic and leave it at that and not get it too terribly polished. Um, but uh, just this came out, I believe it was 2015, although I think it was recorded in 2013. Uh, anyway, so their first thing was this EP, Interdimensional Extinction. Oh, on Dark Descent Records, that's the same label that uh, has re-released all the Time Gold stuff as well. I think Century Media releases some of this stuff, but uh, so here's Interdimensional Extinction. There, there are the lyrics for the four songs. It's only an EP, and what's cool about the EP is you get the tracks on here. The second side doesn't have uh, anything except this slight image of Saturn with the skulls for the, uh, uh, for the rings of Saturn. And I don't know if you can see that at all, but it's a really cool. You've got this outlying artwork on the other side. So you only have music on one side of the album, which I thought was interesting. I've, I don't collect a ton of new vinyl, but I bet that's probably a thing, like a three-sided vinyl setup. But anyway, so that is cool. So that was their first uh, thing they released, and it's good. And it shows a band in the beginning. Well, they make a huge jump in 2016 with Star Spawn. Uh, you know, a huge jump. Again, you've got the lyrics. Uh, photos of the guys. They've had the same lineup. I think maybe the bass player was was new on this, but they've had the same four guys for the uh, two full lengths. So this was 2016, and Star Spawn is is definitely Blood Incantation finds their sound. Uh, but you know, for my money. Then you get to 2019, Hidden History of the Human Race, and this takes the sound to a level. I don't know if they're going to be able to top it. This is only their second full length, and I'm uh, anxiously awaiting their next release, but I also should probably go, it's probably not going to be as, as uh, magical as this one, so don't set the bar too high, but I'm not going to lie, I'm probably going to set the bar pretty high, but... but Fading in is that song, Inner Paths to Outer Space, that kind of got me hooked on the band to begin with, and it's practically instrumental. It's in an odd time signature, it's atmospheric, it's kind of progressive. Uh, it's kind of an outlier, although they did a song like this on Star Spawn, uh, Meticulous Soul Devourment. It sounds brutal, but uh, that's actually like a really clean sounding uh, instrumental as well. Uh, and also, one thing, they have uh, this live vitrification. Why do I have it on? Uh, why do I have it on CD? Well, they have it on vinyl, but the CD gives you this track, this long 18 and a half minute or 19 minute like atmospheric. Just it's just like ambience, and it's got sampled voices from back in the day talking about different types of drugs and DMT and all this stuff. Which is, you know, I've got a Timothy Leary album from like 1966 or 67. It sounds like they just borrowed samples from those things and did all these cool sounds. But the thing is, you can't get that track on the vinyl, but you can get it here on the uh, 
from the CD, but it's called the vitrification of blood. So they take the first track, vitrification of blood part one, and hidden species, vitrification of blood part two, tracks one and three. Well, on here, they glue them together to make one 20 minute live performance. And while I think this recording is probably the best, they play it a little faster here, and it just sounds a little more, just a little more up tempo here. And I like how they glued it together to make one big epic song. So I thought this was cool. And again, it comes with that, you know, that sort of like ambient. I don't even know what it's called. It's that ambient hidden track. Um, so that is pretty much covering all of Blood Incantation again. For whatever reason, this is the band. The way they package stuff, this is the band that I like to collect on vinyl now. Most everything else I'll get on CD and, you know, I'll get old vinyl, but this is one of the few new vinyl bands. Uh, great artwork by Bruce Pennington. Again, I'd love to have those posters up here, but there's just no room at this point. But a uh, big fan of Blood Incantation, one of the few modern death metal bands that I follow. And by modern, I just mean a band that started up here within the last few years. But they play just this super specific style that reminds me of Time Ghoul and Immolation and Morbid Angel and Gore Guts and Incantation and just bands like that. Nocturnus, they got sort of that, you know, that cosmic astral thing. Uh, so that is, uh, you know, I'm trying to think, is there anything else I didn't cover about, uh, you know, about Blood Incantation? But uh, so there you go. That's that's part one of this three pack. So the, the first band, uh, Blood Incantation, one of my favorite bands going. And I didn't do a ranking for the best albums of 2019, but I got to think that album would have been like top three, at least. It would have been, if it wasn't number one, it would have been right there. Certainly top five, probably top three. Uh, okay, so moving on. Uh, so from going from a modern band that doesn't have an extensive catalog, and that's how they fit into this, uh, and moving on to a band that has an extensive catalog, I just can't keep up. I kind of got in the, into them in the middle of their career and have failed to keep up with them over the last few albums, uh, but that is Nile. Um, here is uh, Annihilation of the Wicked. I think we're going to hear Nile kick in here any second now. Um, this is from 05. The, and here is uh, Ithophallic from 07. And then here is Those Whom the Gods Detest from 09. And I thought I had this CD, but I guess I realize I don't, but I should have it. Uh, In Their Darkened Shrines, put the picture up. That's the first thing I heard from them. It's got Sarcophagus, was a video they had back in like 02. They had a different drummer, they had Tony Loriano, Loriano. But it's basically Carl Sanders, Professor Carl Sanders. Uh, and during this era, it's Dallas, Fuller Wade, he's got the skillet. And uh, for the most part, it's George Colias on drums. The fact, Kafir from uh, Those in the Gods of the Test. This is probably my favorite album from there. Those in the Gods of the Test. It used to be Annihilation of the Wicked, and in reviewing this, In Their Dark and Shrines is really damn good too. Different drummer, but I think it has the. Uh, uh, if the Phallic, I think, is good, uh, the production's a little different on it. It's cool though, but I think if I was, there were four albums that I kind of follow Nile on, and that's In Their Dark and Shrines, uh, Annihilation of the Wicked, It's a Phallic, and Those Who the Gods to Test. And I think if I just rank those, uh, Those Who the Gods to Test, Annihilation of the Wicked, In Their Dark and Shrines, I guess It's a Phallic would be number four. I like how they have two, you know, it's mostly Dallas Toller weight growling, but you've got, I think Carl's doing the lower stuff. And I like sometimes how they're blasting away, but the vocals are going slow over the blast. Uh, and by the way, I would not want to, I would not want the pressure of being in a band that has to be, they're extremely extreme. They play in the extreme realm of brutal death metal and somehow still are able to stand out. I just feel like the minute you put down what you think is the heaviest song ever, somebody's going to top it. So there's pressure to just keep it as intense as possible. But on top of that, they have these incredibly awesome ancient Egyptian themes, uh, Mesopotamia, whatever, all those ancient uh, themes like this. I forget the long, long title, Papyrus Containing the Spell, etc. 
that video sums them up perfectly. It's just like, I think they're playing in like the, uh, the catacombs. Anyway, the villagers are getting pulled into the river, into the Nile by these crocodiles. I mean, that's the perfect imagery for them. Along with the pyramids, you know, you get the pyramids in the background. Uh, you know, the Sphinx. They got a song on here, the Eye of Ra. I mean, all of this stuff is uh, cast down the heretics, sacrifice unto Sebek. Um, yeah. They are. I'm sure there's some band out there that's even more brutal, but I think for for my collection, I think this might be the most brutal band I have. It's more tissue, more brutal than Nile. They sound sonically with that drum machine and the slow vocals. They're pretty, pretty brutal. But uh, yeah, so. This band, I think what happened was, I never got into the Black Seeds of Vengeance, or I think they did maybe some EP before that. I never really was aware of what they were doing in the early days. Uh, but then I saw the Sarcophagus video and thought, wow, these guys are really dark and heavy. Uh, and I like how they do the super blitzing and then they do the super slow, and they kind of mix that back and forth. Like on this album, this is why this is my favorite. I mean, you got Kafir, Hittite, Dung Incantation, which is next. Uh, Those Whom the Gods Detest is like eight or nine minutes. The Fourth Aura of Dagon might be my favorite track on here. Uh, the Eye of Ra. Just in the production. Uh, uh, it mix in that old Middle Eastern. Big, slow, chunking rhythm with that weird melody and George Colias' bass, double bass. I think this is my favorite production. I also think these songs are the most memorable. They stand out the most. I think my only thing with Nile is sometimes they're so brutal, full felt that it's hard to differentiate. And the, the albums are long, too, for being blitzing. They're like 50-some-odd minutes. It's a pretty intense listen. Um... I think I stopped listening to them. Uh, one, there are so many bands. And two, I think they put out an album called At the Gate of Sethu. And I remember hearing that and thinking it was not as good as the previous, you know, if you count in their Dark and Trans, it wasn't as good as the previous four I had heard. Um, not that it was bad, it just wasn't adding or upping the quality at all. So I know they put out two albums since, and I know their most recent one, Dallas Color Wade, is no longer in the band. Uh, I think I saw a video for that, but I, I can't really tell you too much about, uh, couldn't really tell you too much about uh, the last two albums. Certainly, I, I don't know, I think as I recall, the new, the new vocalist sounds fairly like he fits in, but uh, I think the classic lineup was this, when Dallas Fuller Wade was your lead vocalist and guitarist with, you know, with Carl Sanders. Uh, and then I guess, you know, Tony Laureano was on the one album, but George Colias to me seems like the quintessential Nile drummer. Um, but just incredible. And if you like the history of, of Egypt and Mesopotamia and those ancient cultures, uh, there's a lot of liner notes. So not only are the lyrics telling you these dark, ancient stories, but there's a lot of times there's background for Carl on where he found the stuff, or what inspired him, or, or this or that, but, uh, yeah. There is no God. Uh, uh, so that's that's the thing. I think Nile had, like I said, I kind of just cover the middle era of Nile. I think they had two albums, one in 98 and one in 2000. I'm not familiar with those at all. And they've done three since. So I think they have like a total of nine albums, four of which I'm pretty familiar with. Uh, uh, so, you know, I, if I was, if I had followed them the whole way through, uh, we definitely have a show dedicated to the Nile albums. Uh, but I just, uh, I'm familiar with the, with the middle era of the band. There's another one, Hittite Dung Incantation. It sounds brutal, because it is brutal. Uh, Okay, so that is covering uh, that is covering the brutal uh, death metal band. Uh, by the way, Blood Incantation, 
stateside, from the states, from Denver. Niall from Greenville, South Carolina, such a random place for, for a band like this to come from. But I guess the drummer George, he's from Greece. So you've got one, uh, one guy from ancient Mesopotamia. Uh, okay, so that's covering uh, Nile as well. So we've covered Blood Incantation. Uh, we've covered uh, Nile, or at least the middle era of Nile. Uh, and now we're moving on to the, uh, to the final band. And I might have to speed up the music for the next band to get it. Uh, Alexa, next. Okay, so the third and final band for tonight uh, is this band, Cataclysm from Quebec, from Canada, uh, from Montreal. And I'm only covering Cataclysm's early era because that's really the, the era I got into uh, in real time, so back in the day. And also, I got into this band mainly for their vocalist, Sylvain Hood, their original vocalist. So. I heard this EP in 93, The Mystical Gate of Reincarnation, and it was the most devastatingly brutal thing I heard at that point in my life. We're listening to the Orb of Uncreation, but they took their demo from 92 and then re -recorded, they recorded the Orb of Uncreation to go with it to fill it out as a full EP, but the, uh, it was originally a trilogy of songs, The Mystical, uh, was it Frozen in Time, Mystical Plane of Evil, and Shrine of Life. And those are even more raw. His voice is just so demonic. And I don't even, on these early albums, I couldn't even tell you necessarily the quality of the riffs because I'm really not listening to the riffs. I'm just listening to how insane his voice is. And I actually like the fact that they sound like they're coming off the rails as a band. It's so raw. They're like out of control. I thought they just sounded out of control and insanely evil and dangerous. My favorite thing they've ever done is this little EP that started it all. But I have Sorcery. It also has this on here as bonus track. So it's called Sorcery and the Mystical Gate of Reincarnation. Uh, and it's got some bonus tracks beyond that. Uh, this is cool too. It's not, it's good. I think the fans love this one. Uh, I like it too. I think the title track, I think the first two tracks come out blazing. It's good. The production is, uh, the ripping on here at times is actually kind of normal, but again, his crazy vocals just make everything better. And then, I really dug this out. The Temple of Knowledge, Cataclysm Part 3. Uh, the Unholy Signature, if we get to it, that's the next song on here. But uh, they got a different drummer here, and this one is probably their best musically. This is their most insane, though. But this is their best musically. I thought it was pretty dark. Um, Somewhere in there, they did a two-song thing called Vision the Chaos, which I still haven't heard, but apparently they have a song, Vision the Chaos, it's called Cataclysm Part 1, just that song. Then they re-record Shrine of Life from here, and then this is Cataclysm Part 2, and this is Cataclysm Part 3, but Cataclysm Part 1 is the song Vision the Chaos. I need to go find that on YouTube and listen to it, but if you, if you like the Sylvain Hood era, this is all of it right here, but... If you want to hear all of the Sylvain Hood era, find those two songs. Yeah. This is the Unholy Signature from this album. Different drummer. You can tell they're getting better at their instruments at this point. But, uh, you know, so Sylvain Hood quits the band after this EP and these two full lengths. Kind of like Blood Incantation have an EP and two full lengths. This band started out the same way, an EP and two full lengths. Then he leaves the band and... I'm sure there are plenty of Cataclysm fans out there. I think I counted they have, I mean, I'm only talking two full lengths in a DP, but I think they have 14 full lengths at this point. So they, this style of the band just disappeared when, when their vocalist, their original vocalist quit, but they've put out a dozen full lengths since then. So they didn't stop. And they're still on Nuclear Blast where they were at the beginning. Um, Maurizio Iacono, he's the, uh, the vocalist now. Back in the day, he was the bass player. And what is it, Jean-Francois? 
Yeah, the, one of the guitar players and uh, Maurizio, the bass player, they're still in the band to this day. So two of the original guys are still there today. But uh, they just, they changed. They weren't nearly as insane uh, after Sylvain left. Like, his voice just lent itself to off-the-rails insanity. And then they, I don't want to say they were a groove death metal band, but everything just came more, became more normal. It just became more uh, typical death metal. And not the insane stuff that really made them stand out, in my opinion. So that's why I kind of stopped following them. In fact, that is why I stopped following them, is because they lost their vocalist, and they didn't, re they, instead of replacing him with a, another crazy vocalist, they just changed their style to a different kind of death metal. Um, but I will always love the heck out of these early albums. Uh, and much like I said, Nile is the heaviest band probably on my show. At one point, I would have told you, back in like 19... When did this come out? 93? I would have said 93, 94, 95. This Cataclysm was the heaviest band on the planet. Uh, but see, there you go. That's uh, covering Cataclysm from Quebec, Canada. Um, uh, so there you go. That's talking uh, about the entire discography of Blood Incantation, the middle era of Nile, and the very early era of uh, Cataclysm. Uh, so there you go. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.